Thank you for that. Um, so I would like to begin today's message with, with, with a small thought. So if we go back, the year is 2020. The day is January 1st. And on that day, let's say for most of us, we were at that time uh, professing Christians. So we're reading our Bible and we read where it says in Romans 3, verse 23, it says, For all has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then we read Psalms 51, 5, where it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin, my mother conceived me. And we turn a couple pages and in Mark 7, 21, we read, For from with him and out of, uh, out of the heart of men proceed the evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murders, and adulteries. In Ephesians chapter 5, 8, it says, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are in the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. But then we turn a couple pages, and then we read in 1 Timothy 1, 15, 16, says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy. We also read about in Luke where it says, Luke chapter 23, verse 34, which it says, as he hung up on the cross and Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so many verses, right? And the reason why I'm reading this is because we read, you know, the verses that I just read, several verses has to do with our iniquity, right? As human, human beings. And by it also has to do with promises that God has given us. Of our blessing promises that are found in Jesus Christ, where our forgiveness of our sins are found in him. And those verses were just as vital to pressing Christian in the year 2020, January 1st, as they are now in the year 2020, August 27. The reason why I said this is that we must remember that we were in need of the gospel back then. We're also in need of the gospel right now. We cannot forget that we need the Lord Jesus Christ each and every day, just like my brother just prayed. You know, we often forget, right, because you know, we, we look at, you know, there's there's always this these uh, these two sides of the of the streams that we tend to go, right? Where we think of well, you know, when things are really bad, we need the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, when the other stream could be when things are, are really good, guess what? We still need the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I just want us to have that in mind as we go on into this uh a small uh, study that uh, my brother Stephen has given me the privilege to share with you guys. And I hope you guys are blessed as much as I was during my study and during the, the contemplation of the, of the, of the verses that, that I hope to expound. So let us turn our Bible to John chapter 6. And we're going to be reading John chapter 6, verse um, 53 to 71. Now I'm reading from the uh, King James Version. One second, let me change this. I'm using my computer right now too. <laughs> so John chapter six, verse 53 says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. 
He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? Verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples were murmur at it, he said unto them, does, does this offend you? Hmm. A question to ask. Verse 62. What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascended up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But they are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who shall betray him. And he said, Therefore say unto you that no man can come unto me except were it given unto him of my father. From that time, Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Verse 67. Then Jesus, then Jesus said unto his 12 disciples, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered then, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judah, Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So those are the, the the context of the teaching of today's Bible study that I would like to share with you. And then the title of this message is Warning, You Are Here Professing to Be Walking With Him. And I take that out of the, uh, the verses where it says, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So let us begin. I would like to start off by expounding a little bit of what John chapter 6, verse 53 says when he talks about, um, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink of his blood, ye have no life in you. But what is he trying to say this? Is this something, is, is Christ telling us to become uh uh, eaters of actually human flesh and, and, and drinking human blood? No, of course not. The, you know, we, we have to allow uh, scriptures to in, in, interpret scriptures. And as we, we read and, and, and find verses that, uh, that are similar to, to this uh, verse that we just read, it will provide us with, with the context, with the actual uh, proper interpretation. As a, as a student of the Word of God, as we profess to be Bereans, one of the things that we are mandated as, as, as professing Christians is to, is to read the Word of God. Uh, God has been so good to us, so good to us, that He has ensured that throughout all this time, right now, even until the year 2020, and even until the day the Lord Jesus comes, His Word has been kept. And his word is faithful and truthful. 
his word has been tried by the pagans. And guess what? It, it is found to be true yet still. So we, we, we got to, you know, read our Bible. I mean, that's uh, what a wonderful thing to have our Bible in our phones, our Bible in our laptops, our Bible everywhere. What is it good for, though, if we don't even read it? Right. So in order for us to interpret the scripture properly, we must read our Bible. And then secondary to that, I would say we must seek help. It is OK to seek help when, you know, that's why I love these Bible studies where it is allowed and encouraged to ask questions. I mean, you have a well of knowledge in my brother, uh, Deacon Stephen right here and all the brethren who, who, who know the word of God. And, and you are able to, to ask questions and get answers. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. So when he talks about eating, and when he talks about in verse 53, and so on, he talks about eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, he's, he's obviously not talking about in the literal sense. So what we must do, it's read, uh, I put down there, eating equals believing. In your outline, if you see it, now, this is a metaphorical interpretation. And the reason why I say that is because if we go and read John chapter 5, verse 24, which is verses, you know, uh, that, that are before this, so that will give us the ground to, to interpret this properly. So let us go to John chapter 5, verse 24. So I'm putting this in. There we go. All right. You know, in chapter 5, verse 24, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come unto condemnation, but it is passed from death unto life. You guys see the parallel between the, 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 the text we just read and this one? And remember, this, this, one's, this verse is before that, so it gives us the ground to interpret the next one. Uh, if you read John chapter 6, verse 40, let's go to that one. In John chapter 6, verse 40, it says, And this is the way of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last. So properly interpreted that the, the verse He's talking about a metaphorical interpretation. Jesus is not literally telling us to eat and drink his blood. He's telling us we must believe in him. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. John chapter 6, verse 22. Jesus' words call us to lay hold of him alone by faith, the believing part. The one who shed his blood for our sins and who rose from the dead to justify us and he gave us eternal life he is the true bread that comes down from heaven in him we truly taste and see that the Lord is good let me ask you a question have you tasted have you seen have you tasted that the Lord is good you know I often tell my, my kids when we're doing a Oh, when, when we're about to eat dinner, I always pray for them. Or when we gather for family worship each and every night, I often tell my children this. The Lord has been too good to me. I always tell them that. Because when you count your blessings, Christian, when you truly think how good the Father has been to you, you could truly say, boy, he is too good. And... Uh, so the Lord is calling us here to, to believe in him. Um, the next point I want to make is that there is no other path to eternal life. If you go and uh, let's go back and read uh, John 6. We're going to stay there. We're going to stay in John chapter 6. Where I'm going to do my best to expound verse by verse to, 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 to glean from this and to, and to provide us an a, a encouragement along with a warning at the end. So in, 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 if we read John chapter 6, verse 53 through 57, that will provide us the, the context for the next point, which is no other path to eternal life. 
says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat, and indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live in my Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So the point there is what it says. Um, let me see. Uh, I just had it. I apologize for this. So in verse 53, where it says, it said, you eat of the Son of, uh, uh, or eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. You have no life. There's a connection there. Unless you, you have no life. And the connection there is that there's only one way to obtain eternal life. And that it is through Christ Jesus. This is why I put those verses, Acts 4, 1 Timothy chapter 2, John 14, John 10, John 11. If we look at some of these verses there, look at Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It, it, it tells us really clear that there is neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men or by we must be saved. And in First Timothy chapter two verse five says, "For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus." And then to wrap this point, where it says in John chapter fourteen verse six, Jesus said unto him, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me." It is, it is Christ Jesus the only way to get to the Father. It is Christ Jesus the only way we can have eternal life. There is no other way, only in Christ. It is in believing in Christ is that we obtain, uh, we obtain a, a eternal life. It is believing in Christ that we're accepted and, as a matter of fact, adopted in the Beloved. Where, where the father could actually call us sons and daughters. You don't come through, you, you, you don't have faith in his son, you don't have the privilege to be called yourself a, a son or a daughter. It's just, it's just clear. And, and this may scandalize some people. And this is the, the next point that I would like to make. Scandalize disciples, it says on our outline. In John chapter six, again, when we read in verse 60 to 62, it says, Many therefore of his disciples, when they have heard these, and in this, in the context, it's talking about like him speaking about, you must eat of my flesh. You must drink my blood. And then, you know, he's, he talks about um, that he is the bread that came down from heaven. And after they heard this, many therefore of his disciples, when they have heard this, Right? Said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? You know, uh, you tell them, uh, think of, 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 of the best preacher, human preacher you have ever heard in your life. I bet you they don't even come close to hearing Jesus Christ like this. They just don't. And, and these people right here, they got scandalized. This is a harsh saying, what he's telling us right now. This is, this is really tough. I mean, he's, he's, he's talking about drinking his blood. He's talking about like believing in him, believing that he is the, the true bread that came down from heaven. That is a harsh saying. In verse 61, he says, When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmur at it, you know, because they, they, they probably has they probably said, man, this is a hard saying. 
You know, they said that to each other. They didn't want to, they didn't want to fully say out loud. You know, this is why the word murmur is used, you know. We murmur, right? We, we just, uh, we don't, we don't fully want to come up with we are complaining, so or whatever we are saying, you know, wherever we're murmuring, we don't wanna we don't want everybody to know. But guess what? The Lord Jesus knew, you know. He's omniscient, he he know he knows everything. So he knew, you know, he says when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmur at it, he said unto them, Now the Lord Jesus is very, very, very blunt, and very honest, straight to the point. And he, he tells them that the people who were murmuring about what they just heard, does this offend you? I, 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 you know, and, and please, when, when you're trying to read the word of God, read it in his context, try to glean as much as possible from the context, but then ask yourself, how does that context actually apply to you and, and meditate on, on questions like this? Think of, put yourself in a situation. Does this offend you? Are we offended that the Lord Jesus Christ declare exclusivity? He declared it in saying, you must believe. You must drink of my blood. You know, he, he said that, right? He says, you must eat of my flesh. This is exclusivity. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ says that he is the bread that came down from heaven. He's, he's, he's telling them that, that your fathers, they eat the manna. But guess what? That, that, that bread they ate, they're dead. That bread they ate was not the bread that was going to provide them eternal life. It was not going to provide them the life that they need. That bread was a, 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 a used by God to point them to the real bread of life which is Christ himself. Are we as Christians in the year 2020 offended by this? Are we offended that the Lord Jesus Christ claims to have exclusivity of eternal life? Exclusivity when it comes to access to the Father. No other man or woman who declares to believe on anything else outside of Christ can have access to the Father. Are we offended by this? Do we water down the truth? Do we say, ah, hey, you know, he, he didn't truly say that, you know? Ah, hey, it's not applicable to us. That, what I'm saying to you might now, it, it might sound like hard sayings, you know, but I, I'm just trying to expound. I'm just trying to, Help us to be sober-minded in the year 2020 right now, especially due to all the crisis that is around us. I want you to find comfort in the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of everything that's going on in your life. Have comfort in him. Know that he is the bread of life. Know that you could trust in him. Know that it is through him that you have access to the Father. And then you, then it is through him in believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you could sing that beautiful hymn. And I'm sorry, I, I, I just, I'm not a singer, but I, I, I'm just going to tell you, you could say, this is my father's fault. Right. And you could rest in that, you know. That's, that's just a wonderful, wonderful truth. The world, it's our fathers. He rules. In fact, he has given all rule all dominion, all authority, he has been given to his beloved son. And his son is sitting at the right hand of the father, ruling everything, and in fact, he is waiting. He's waiting for his bride, and he's also waiting for all his enemies to become his footstool. And what a wonderful thing that is. And then, so, sorry, I went on a tangent there, but I just get so passionate when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's, he's been too good to me, too good. And so he says here, you know, they were murmuring and he went straight to the point. He says, does this offend you? Verse 62, what if ye shall see the son of man ascending up where he was before? 
And keep that in mind. I'm not going to expound on that question that he just asked them, but keep that in mind because what he's telling them will actually occur not too long ago from after this, right? Because remember, it was after his crucifixion, after he was risen from the dead, he indeed rose again and he went up. He ascended up to heaven. Remember that? So it is very crucial, though, to keep this in mind. What he just asked them, ladies and gentlemen, he's telling them, he asked them that question. What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? It will, and it did occur, not too long after this. Not too long. Just a short little while, Christian. It's a short little while. But sad to say, and I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not, I wasn't going to expound it, but look. He is asking that question to them. And yet many of them did not get to see this. But why? Because he, they stopped walking with him. They stopped pursuing him. A little while, he was going to go. He was going to accomplish the redemption of all the people. How many? All of them. All the people that God had shown us in Christ before the foundation of the world were going to be redeemed when he was at the cross under the wrath of God, paying for all of their sins. People always ask me this question. How many? How many sins? All of them. All the sins of every elect were going to be, were going to be um, um fully satisfied right there when the wrath of God due to the justice of God due to the righteousness and the holy of God came down on the perfect substitute who Jesus Christ was at the cross and he indeed endured the wrath of God all the sins were going to be paid off that's why we call him our redeemer and then after he for three days was dead after he rose again after the third day he goes again to justify every every person, every God, every every person that was chosen before the foundation of the world was going to justify by that act. And therein we have the gospel. Therein we have the comfort. And it is it is in Jesus Christ that we could truly find peace and comfort for ourselves. And then sad to say though. Many of them who heard him ask this question to them did not get to see him ascend it up where he came from because they stopped walking with him. So our next point. So we, we see that what the Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is calling us to actually eating of him signifies it's to believe in him. And then we, we see that, that there's no other path to eternal life except in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you know, just like in the context, in the, in the verses that we just read, some disciples were scandalized, right? They were, they were murmuring. Now, one of the things that I would like to help us is understanding, in, 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 like I say, interpreting the scripture. It's, you know, when we, when most people, when they read that, right, when they read those, those verses, when it talks about, uh, verse 60 on John chapter 6 verse 60 it says many therefore of his disciples what they read into the word disciple is actually elect right and 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 I, and and I will tell you you know why in a little bit but if you look at the word disciple it's actually the the, the word matthias and I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right but what that signifies is is mere merely a learner a pupil Someone is uh, someone who's who's under someone's teaching. If you look at, uh, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty-four. I'm just going to use that one verse to to expand a little bit on this. And uh, Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty-four, it says, "The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his lord." Here we have the same word. And we see, uh, we, we could grab from the context the, the, the true definition of what disciple is because he, the disciple has a master. The disciple has a teacher. 
you know, and we see the parallel between the disciple and the servant and then the master and the Lord, right? And then, so all that is saying on, on, on chapter 6, verse verse 6, where it says, Many therefore his disciples, when they have heard this, it, uh, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? That right there, disciples, that word does not necessarily, it, it does not signify uh, elect. It just signifies someone who's learning, someone who's a pupil. And it specifically, uh, it, on your own time, if you read those verses that I that I put down there, Matthew 10, verse 1, Matthew 11, Matthew 12, all those verses will let you know that actually the word disciple is specifically and more primarily used in the Bible to speak of the 12, right? The 12 disciples. And um, what I was saying about that is that, you know, when, when we read those verses, and we read the word disciple there, most people like to read into it the word elect. And and, and that word is not, uh, it doesn't signify that. You know? One of the things, one of the reasons why is because not all disciples are elect. It's, it's just true. If we look at, um, uh, let's go to let's go to that verse. I was going to go to it, but let's go to, uh, actually we are in it. Uh, John chapter six, verse, 68 to 71. It says, uh, when uh, verse 68 says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 70 says, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is the devil. See, Jesus Christ chose those 12 disciples. And yet, one of them was the devil. So you can't really say, you know, that the word disciple is used as, as the word elect will have been used. Uh, and it is, is the, you know, the, um, one of the things, it, it wouldn't correlate, it, it would not work. It's pro to proper, we uh, interpret the scripture, we must allow the context to, to, to help us understand what certain words mean. And uh, so, I, you know, I put down those verses there, uh, which says, you know, however, all elect are and will die as disciples of Christ. So we have, you, we ourselves, all of us here, right, who are in this Bible study, we were professing Christians. We're professing disciples. Does, that does not necessarily mean, though, that all of us here are elect of God. Because we truly do not know who, who are all the elect. We don't have that knowledge, right? But all of us, even around the world, or even around here in California, where you see all the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and... Thank God for that, and then we encourage one another in the body of Christ, right? But as we see, uh, as we're going to see at the end of, of this Bible study, it's sad to say, you know, or we could uh, all be professing Christians, and then it's sad to say as we as we go in our walk with God and we continue, right? And I'm pretty sure some of our brothers and even sisters would, would, would say, uh, you know, if they've been a Christian five, ten years, or even more, they could testify that, that they, they, they remember and they encounter uh, other disciples, right? And yet, throughout the years, those people who used to call themselves disciples, they're no more. Yeah. And uh, so... Not all disciples are elect. However, all elect are disciples. And the reason why I say this, you know, again, it goes back to, to, to the whole uh, definition of what a disciple is. We, as disciples, we have our master, our master, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are also, as disciples, we are servants. We have our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, right? And... I threw that one in there where it says, fun, fun, fun fact, the word disciple is not even found in the Old Testament, nor in the epistles of the New Testament. See, 
so if you know, I would like to think that the, even the human authors or, or the Holy Spirit would ensure if the if the word disciple was uh, on a one to one ratio we elect. We, I would like to think that we would find it in the Old Testament and even in the epistles of the New Testament, but we just don't. So that's just a quick, you know, so so we want to remember, you know, uh, as we read this, and we see uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is, is telling the, the, the people who are hearing him, the, the masses, uh, the, the crowd there, you know, to eat and drink of him, which is the same thing as you know, he's calling them to believe in him. He, he's letting him know that there is no path to eternal life. He said through him. And all of these got them scandalized, right? This is why they started murmuring. You know. Um, and this uh, murmuring resulted in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, telling them and that from the beginning, he knew. Because God has chosen and in verse in John chapter six, verse sixty-three to sixty-five, we read. Uh, well, verse sixty-two it says, "What if ye see the Son of Man ascended up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth; the flesh forfeiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not." See, in the midst of the crowd, there were some of them that did not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who there were that believed not and who shall betray him. The Lord Jesus Christ here is displaying completely uh, knowledge, a knowledge that, like I said, you and I would not have, but he did, he does. He, he had the knowledge of, of, the, of the fact that God has chosen. See, that, that right there is one of the most uh, controversial to some truth that we have in the Bible. That God will elect. God in his sovereignty will elect a people for himself before the foundations of the world. That God will actually be be willing and 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 de elect a people for himself, and he elected them not just uh, to elect say, but he elected them in Christ Jesus, and that's controversial right there in and of itself. People get scandalized, and um, uh, let us look at uh, a couple of verses just to just to. Uh, find comfort for us who are professing Christians right now to find the comfort that God elected us before the foundations of the world and it's, it's just a wonderful amazing truth uh, I mean what a merciful God what a wonderful God we have that he will elect us um, let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 and 8 One of the things that I love about the Bible, the truth of the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament is that the truth of the Bible are, 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 are equally truth in the Old and in the New. We could go to the Old Testament and find comfort as much as we could go to the New Testament and find comfort too. I just want you to know that, you know, because we live in a day where people are just like, oh, I don't want to hear nothing about the Old Testament. When you start reading the Old Testament, boy, it's a wonderful thing. When you start reading the New Testament, it's a wonderful thing as well. So we read in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 through 8. And I'm probably just going to read the first verse. Um, uh, verse 6, it says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee, thee, to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the faith of the earth. What, what an amazing thing. I mean, that right there is just, wow. The God who choose us above all the people upon the face of the earth and you don't get 
excited, you don't get happy, you don't find comfort in that, boy, man, that right there, it's amazing right there. Verse 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor, shake, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, didn't he love us? Doesn't he love us? I think I remember Pastor Jesse always, always uh, one of his saying is that, you know, when you think or wonder if God loved you, Christian, whatever trials you're going through and, and you start wondering, you start thinking or start questioning whether God loves you, just recall what he did in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just, just recall that that before you were born, he shows you in Christ Jesus. And then in the fullness of time, the Son of God came upon the on, 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 on the on the world that he created. He came and he humbled himself, was born of a virgin. He, he lived a perfect godly life, perfect life, something that we can even fathom because we have sinful thoughts we can't even think of what a perfect godly sinless life is we just can't right and, and yet the lord jesus christ the son of god the begotten son the beloved he lived a perfect godly life upholding all the commandments of god all of them and on the cross he was the perfect substitute dying under the wrath of god Paying for all the sins for all his people, and after three days he rose again to justify him. And you mean to tell me that you know we 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 think that God doesn't love us? Just remember that God loved you. God, it says it right here. For, for us who are believing the gospel, for us who know. God as our Father who have been adopted in the Beloved, right here, is telling us. He's telling us though, that the Lord did not say his love upon us, nor chose us because we were more in numbers than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he will keep his all, isn't he a faithful God? Isn't he the one who is faithful to his truth, to his promises, even though we are not, he is faithful. He indeed accomplished all that the word says that he will accomplish. He promises and he delivers all the time. Not some of the time, not, and you know, 90% of the time, but all the time he delivers. He is, he keeps his oath. He says that he will keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out of with a mighty hand and redeem you out of the house of bondage. I can't, I can't, I mean, you guys right now, and I know I'm kind of being a little in a preaching mode right now, but I tell you, if if, if I were to share that the bondage where, where God Almighty delivered me from, you guys will be scandalized. You guys, you know, it's, I, I tell you, I, the Lord brought me out of, uh, all I could share with you is that just know for a fact that I, I am uh, what our, our, our beloved uh, brother was saying uh, during his uh, wonderful preaching on Sunday. I am one of those that would testify of, of, of the light. I am one of those who, who I must confess what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in my life. Because I was dead in trespassing and sins, but now I am alive. I was blind. I was walking in this world, professing to see, and I was just stumbling, stumbling upon rocks, or stumbling upon my own sins, left and right, falling into a darker, darker pit, each and every day until the light came. But now I see. I must confess that. What 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 God has done in your life and he, he has given you life and now you are born again, Christian, no one could tell you otherwise. We 
just need the grace of God to, to, to stand firm on that day, to, to, to declare what God has done on that day. When someone asks us a question and he talks about what God has done in our life or asks us and, and, and puts us in a situation where we're fearing for our life and we, we can help but to tell the truth, may God just, just give us that mercy to declare the truth to others. What God has done in my life. I mean, he indeed brought me out of the house of Egypt. I was an Egyptian. You guys might, look, I had chains. I was slave. I was slave to sin. I, 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 it's, I'm ashamed of that. But I'm not ashamed to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ has delivered me. I just can't. I cannot deny what he has done in my life. <sighs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> so, let's go back to uh, John chapter 6, verse 65. How, how, how much time I have, Stephen? I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> Just keep, just, just keep preaching, brother. <laughs> uh, John chapter 6, verse 65. And he said, Therefore say unto you, that no man can come unto me, except who were given unto him of my Father. And in, in your outline, you see the point where it says, Given, granted, enabled by the Father, the inability of man stated. And, and the reason why I say this is because if, if we were to break down, if we were to uh, exegete the, the passage here line by line, he says, um, verse 65, and he sound. Therefore, say unto you, he's speaking to the crowd now. He's telling them that no man could come. So uh, Stephen knows this. I, I have a little saying, a catch phrase, I guess, if you would. I say, you know, language matters, and it always does. So, for example, my, my simple example will be, you know, when, let's say, your children is asking you, uh, uh, Mommy, Daddy, can I go to the bathroom? Uh you know, what they should be asking is, may I go to the bathroom, right? Because we understand that the can means uh, uh, ability and may means, uh, it, it talks about permission, right? So we, talk, we, we understand ability and permission. So here in the context here where it says that no man can come, it talks about that no man has the ability to come, right? And, and, and after that it says, Except he were given unto him, we're talking about permission, right? So unless the father permits someone and gives them the ability to come to Christ, they won't, right? And there's so many verses that I could use uh, to to expound a, a truth here. In, of what I would like to say next is, you know, when it comes to you, you and I, or, or those of us like like me who who grew up in the Roman Catholic Church, right? And afterwards, I, I became a, uh, I guess you would say, a Pentecostal, right? And and there in the Pentecostal uh, churches, most of them, at least that I know, of, they, they 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 teach this this great doctrine of them, you know, where it talks about the free free will of man, right? And you know, uh, talking about the, the the man has a free will, and they you know to do whatever whatever he or she pleases, and whatever time they decide to come to Christ, they're they're, they're gonna come. You know what's crazy though, is that this, the same people that teach this are the same people that will pray for those people to come to Christ. But wait a minute, if they had the ability and they can come whenever they want to. Why will you need to pray to God to, to assist them or to enable them to come? It just makes no sense, right? 
But we, as 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 we 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 see the truth of the gospel, the truth that is set forth all throughout Scripture. We see that men cannot come, and men would not come unless the Holy Spirit does a work in them. Unless the work, unless the work of the Holy Spirit is done in someone's life, that person will not. This is why, like me and others who had the blessing and the privilege of being a parent, we stay on our knees and we pray to our Father, Father, give our children life, forgive them of their sins, have them to see the Lord Jesus Christ, have them to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think uh, uh, right before the, the, the Bible started, it started, I think I've heard someone asking for prayer for, I believe, one of their daughters. We know that without the, the, the mercy of God, without the Holy Spirit coming in power to give that 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 dead center life and, and and eyes to see to behold the glory of God in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ a person will not come and they cannot and will not come because they're dead in trespasses and sins here we see like I said the inability of men stated we just see that plainly there. Um, for the sake of time, I won't go into those verses. I think mo most of us are familiar with Romans 3, Romans 8, 1 Corinthians. At your own time, please, you know, read these, the, the verses there. Uh, you have time, brother. You have time. Go ahead. <laughs> I would like to go to, to my next point where it, uh, it says, no longer follow him. This is the, the I guess, the... the the conclusion of my message here, but I would like to expound a little bit more on here. And in verse six, John chapter six, verse 66 says this. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Now, that, the, the beginning of, of that verse Right, you know, in the King James Version, so let me read it again. It says, from that time, that's how the, the verse starts. Uh, it, it could actually be translated, after this, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Or, actually, uh, to be a little bit more precise, what I believe to be the best translation will be as a result of this, many of his disciples went back and walked with him. As, as a result of what? That's a great question. Well, it's a, as a result of what the Lord Jesus Christ just stated in the verses that we read before. Him stating that, that the, it is mandatory for you to eat, for you to drink. And remember, we, we just learned that the the eating and the drinking equals believing. It is mandatory for you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if you are going to have it from nobody. It is, it is, it is in Jesus Christ what eternal life it is found. It is in Jesus Christ, He is the eternal life. He is the one that will give you eternal life. No other person, no other way. To the Father, except through Christ. It is all these things that the Lord did. He said that He is the true bread, and it is the result of this, of what the Lord Jesus Christ just stated, that that uh, His disciples went back and walked with Him no more. Um, this is, of course due to the preceding context, right? What I was just stating. Uh, the, the discourse that our master just gave regarding him being the bread of life, the vital necessity of believing or eating of him. Otherwise, there is no eternal life. 
these professing disciples went back. They went back to their ordinary life, to their daily pursuit of their former ways of living, of thinking and acting. They went back to return no more. People got offended due to his exclusivity declared. The necessity mandated and the sovereignty in election declared. Because remember, he told him, he, he knew from the foundation, he's the one he chose. And they got offended by that. And they went back. They went back to walking. Now, I have three uh, sub points there that, that, that I would like to. Uh, uh, you know, it, I, I truly believe there are the main reasons why people go back. After professing to have tasted of heavenly things, after professing to, 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 to know the Lord Jesus Christ, after professing to, to have tasted of the goodness of the Lord, they, they go back. And I, and I truly believe that these are the reasons. One, because they have no firm root. There is no firm foundation. Their household is built upon sand and not upon a rock. Now, I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm talking to, the, I'm talking about them that go back, right? But I apply it to ourselves. Am I building my house upon sand? Am I building my house upon the rock? Do I have roots? Are my roots secure so that when the wind comes, I'm in grounded. I am firmly grounded upon the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, upon all his promises. Am I am I am I rooted? Think about it. And then those those people who went back were translated. They were removed. They turned. It's it it's they did a one eighty. You know, in the in the military, uh, you know, there's a commandment where it say about first, and then that's when you do like a one eighty. And that's exactly what they did. They did a one eighty, and and they did a one eighty to the Son of God. They did a one eighty to 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 the preacher. Of preachers, the, the 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 master of master, the one who whose whose words were perfect. I tell them every sermon that the Lord Jesus Christ, not like the one I'm giving right now, which is poor, but his sermons were perfect. His sermons were perfect, and and you could hear nothing but truth coming out of his lips. Compassion. The Lord Jesus Christ showed compassion to the needy. And they did a 180. They, they did an about face. They were translated. See, ladies and gentlemen, in this world, there's 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 only two sides. You either on God's side, or on, on, on God's side, or you are against him. There is no middle ground. There is no like, well, you know, I, there is no I'm agnostic ground where they seek to be like, well, you know, I really don't know if there is a God or whatever. I'm not against for, or saying that there is no God. And I'm not against for saying that there is a God. You know, I'm just like, <laughs> I just go about my life. You know, and, you know there's, I'm not really saying that, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way. You know, there could be other ways. You know, I mean, they, you know those people who always try to seek the middle ground with everything, you know, and they seek to that because they're not rooted in the truth. They seek to to please men rather than God. They seek to to water down the truth, and they do a one eighty. They do a one eighty. They're they're removed. They're translated. They're turned crazy thing is that uh, I'm almost done. We say some verse 66, uh, 66 so it says, from that time many 
I was contemplating that uh, on, on, on Wednesday, uh, uh, yesterday, around like 5, 5.30 in the morning. I wake up super early, uh, Stephen knows. I wake up to go to the gym or, or you know, uh, when I'm giving a task like this, like the one he gave me to, to allow me to come tonight and to share this work with you and to study and to contemplate. I mean, just think of that. Contemplate on that word, many. That's just not a few. But many deserted. Many did a 180 that day. Many were found to be not rooted. Many were translated. Many were removed. Many turned on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and, I, and as I was contemplating that yesterday in the morning, I'm just in my knees praying to God. Lord, keep me. Lord, help me. You know what I said to God? You, you know, if you know, if you, you you want to know how to pray or help you how to pray, hey, pray this. Help my unbelief. <laughs> Lord, help me. Keep me. Let me be one of the few who who just. By your mercy, Lord, let me one of the, be one of those few who will do whatever you want to me. Do like Job. Test me, Lord, but keep me. Bring sickness into my life. Bring poverty. Bring whatever you want to shape me in the image of the, your son, but keep me. That's all I ask. Keep me. I want to be one of the few who is stuck with him. I don't want to be part of that many, you know? Uh, to, to, perhaps there's a young person here tonight listening to this you know this is why and, and, and often too good to be with the many <laughs> you know what I mean See, just because there's a crowd there that doesn't mean that's where the party is you know <laughs> that might be what trouble is <laughs> so just think about that you know it is very it is, you know sometimes it's, it's more of a blessing to be rather with a few than the many. And I left that quote in there. I uh, know Stephen uh, asked me, he's like, hey, you know about that quote that you have in your, uh, uh, in my outline, you know, it is one of my styles of, of teaching and, and preaching, I guess. It's, I, I like to always glean, I like to always go back on, upon uh, and read uh, on our brothers and, and sisters who, 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 who end their, their race well, who, 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 who finish the race, who, who, who fought the good fight? You know those 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 true professing Christian who die being a Christian. You know, and this is why I chose A. W. Pink on this one, where he says, you know, he he was talking about the verse uh, verse sixty six. He says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What a contrast was this from what occurred at the beginning of the day. Then the many had crossed the sea and saw him out. Now the many turned their backs on, upon him. So unreliable and so fickle is human nature. We are. We are fickle and we are unreliable. And this is why we must seek to be rooted. We must seek to, 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 to build our house upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll leave you with, with not expounding the last couple of verses, but just these couple of questions, you know, it says a sovereign question where the Lord Jesus Christ asked in verse 67, then said Jesus unto the 12, will ye also go away? Think about it. And then what a wonderful thing, right? When, uh, what Peter said to him. The next one. To whom should we go? Verse 68 says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we. See, he, he, he Peter, is, is speaking here as a spokesman for the twelve. Because he's not saying, I believe. He's saying, we. We believe 
And then throughout history, we, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, have confessed this. We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. May God help us to continue to hold that confession. May God help us. That's it, brother. Amen. Amen, brother.